up, blockhead? All right, so probably start with the uh, breakout. Okay. So it's like a natural progression, natural upgrade. All right, what's up, guys? So today we're doing uh, a couple of test rides with my man A.A. Ron, or Aaron, up here at Orlando Harley-Davidson. Oh. And we're doing some test rides on, sorry, it's Eric. Doing some test rides on a breakout, and then after the breakout, we're gonna be test riding the uh, CVO breakout. Uh, so there's what the 103 in this the 110 yep. in that one and then reese is actually taking along the uh trike which uh, 107 107 okay yep. cool you want to give us some info about the the breakout it's a 2017 uh this is a 2017 breakout uh this is the charcoal denim setup it's pretty similar to the old the last year's model they for 17s they get rid of the ignition system so the security system is standard on this same as a low rider special so easy to get on and off of. Uh, I got the 21 inch mag roll up front, stretched out, sits nice and low. Real comfortable bike to ride. Comes with the sprinkles. <laughs> <laughs> Damn weather. Might be a wet test drive. Yeah, right. What size is the uh, rear tire? Uh, it is a 240 on the rear. 240 on the rear? Yep. All right. Everything else is stock about it? Yep. Yeah? Okay. Cool. Let's uh, give it a go. All right. It's a good looking bike. I love the style of it. The fact that it looks like stretched out, you know, it's longer, it sits really low. That's one of the things I love about the breakouts. But because of that, your lean angle is definitely uh, not as good as, say, the, um, like the low rider S. Lean angle on the low rider S is amazing. So just to give you guys some back uh, experience for myself, if you're new to the channel. I uh, started out on a Harley Iron 883. Uh, I upgraded to a Dyna Lowrider S, so it went from an 883 to a 110 cubic inch. I uh, also have a Yamaha R6. We're good, dog. So that's uh, kind of my experience with motorcycles. If you want to see any of that, you can go check out the, the channel. So this is actually my second time riding this bike. Uh, first time around uh, was a while back. I didn't really get a feel for the bike because it wasn't like a really long test ride, you know? It was just like, it was kind of one of these group rides that we did. And uh, I didn't really get like super in depth into like how it felt. So there's a couple things that I like to cover in the test rides. And one of them is how the bike feels in terms of like ergonomics, uh, how the bike feels in terms of power, which we'll get into. You know how the uh, obviously the transmission feels and shifting and all that good stuff. Yeah, so I'm talking to like ride height and so uh, yeah, there's a couple things to focus on. You know, just like the overall feel of it. Um, you know where everything is. Obviously, this is a cool one. I mean, I love the color of it. Uh, it does have the forward controls on it. Um, the bars. So everything is stock about the bike. The mirrors I can actually see because the bars are kind of wider. I am kind of looking at my shoulders or my arms in the mirrors though but you know so there's a big difference between this bike and my lowrider s and that is the feeling of the friction zone of the clutch or the clutch lever it engages like very smoothly which is awesome So 
it's in a turn, almost on pegs. So just going over controls real quick, it is pretty standard for Harley. You've got your selection here, which changes the display right there. So you can just like see, you can see trip A, trip B, remaining mileage, time. Dude, really? What a jerk. Yeah, so trip A, trip B. Uh, then you actually have your gear indicator and your RPMs right there. I think it's a person on the test ride for a Toyota. They don't need to be test driving that car if they don't know how to freaking drive. They look out for motorcycles, yo. And then you also have your basically mileage on the bike. So mileage on this bike is 37 miles, not much. And your remaining gas mileage. So it's a pretty full tank. You've got like 130 miles left to go. So in addition to that, selection for your little LCD display or whatever. Like I was saying, everything else is pretty standard. You've got your horn right there, left turn signal, you've got your high beam, and then you've got, all right, which is there, dummy lights are up here for that. Ooh, engine braking. Yeah, so you've got your high beam, you've got your low beam, you've got your pass light where you can basically hold it and it'll turn it on and off. Your left indicator, here you have your hazard lights, your, you know, your kill switch, on off switch, your starter, and then your right signal. Dummy lights are all up here with your left and right turn signals. You've got neutral in the middle, you've got your high beam indicator and then your oil, uh, and then your gauge, which shows your RPM if you want in there as your tack, and then, you know, your miles per hour with the rest of it. Now the seat on this thing is really super comfortable. It sits, you know, with forwards, so your rider triangle is definitely more, more forward. And uh, is, it's definitely like a really like smooth bike. Now, I was talking about and mentioning the lean angle earlier. So if you look at that, I mean, my feet are almost touching the ground whenever we lean like that. Uh, whenever we take it back to the Harley dealership, they do have a little course and I'll kind of get in some turns there just to show you guys. All right, so note in the turns, the breakouts, since they're so low where my feet are, how they, my heels are gonna scrape. They're the first thing to touch down right there. If I take the turns good enough, yep, like right there, heel scraping, left, heel scraping. That's even with me like putting them up where they're supposed to be. Anyways, back to the video. Skirt. So engine should be nice and warmed up at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and get on a 30 roll. <laughs> it's got some, it's got some really nice acceleration. It's real smooth. I could only imagine with like a aftermarket exhaust on it that it'll sound real nice. My kickstand is it's a little weird. I mean, I guess pretty traditional for there, but it's a nice bike, man. Really super smooth. Don't want to get hit by a car. It's really nice, man. I like it. I think my, my biggest complaint about it is the lean angle. Like when you're leaning, you're, you're the heels of like my boots, you know, first thing to touch. That's one of the downsides of the, I mean, the Softail family in general, they're not really made to corner like a lot of other Harleys. Yeah, I mean, especially like with the Lowrider S, it's like the clearance on it is really way high. Yep. But uh, it's just in comparison. Yeah, I mean, um, the Softails are definitely made for style and low seat height. Because uh, they have that pull shock underneath, so it gives that hard tail look on the side. Something sit a lot lower, so you just can't lean it like you would on any other bike. Yeah, so that's one of the things about this is it actually looks like it's a it's a hard tail, but it, the suspension is it's on the inside of it, right? Yep, it's pull shocks underneath. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, man, it's a really super smooth bike. I like the seating position. The ergonomics of it are really really nice. Comfortable with the forwards. What's I mean the the seat height is like super low too, so. I mean, in terms of people that are that are shorter. Yeah, it's like 23 inches, I think. 23 inch. Yeah, so like I'm 5'10", and my legs are 
I mean, bent, flat footing it. How tall are you? Uh, 5'10". 5'10 also? Would you mind sitting on it to give people an idea? Yeah, so I mean, it's... Yeah, not, not, not even trying, my legs are bent. It's, I mean, that's why these are really popular for people that aren't super tall. Yeah. Uh, they're really easy to handle, and being able to stay flat-footed on any of the models in the Sawtail family really helps the rider feel really confident, and it's really easy to handle the bikes. Yeah. Yeah, it's really smooth, and uh, like, yeah, when you're coming to a stop, man, it's not like you're really reaching, like, your legs or anything, so yeah. it's a nice bike. I like it. And then, that's the 103, so we're on the 110 up next. Yep. How'd you like it riding it around? It's, it's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Having the inverted front end on the soft tail makes a big difference. Oh, is it inverted forks on the front? Yep. Nice. Do they do that with all the CBOs? Uh, the breakouts, yeah. Yeah. And so it's a, uh, what, 2017? Yep. Is the 17 also? Yes. Okay. All right, so what are some specs on this one? Uh, this one is the Spring Eagle 110 motor. Uh, so it gets a good bit more power, as you already know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it does have the inverted front end, which is why the, the wheel is uh, 16 or 17, I believe. A little bit smaller to compensate for that. It helps with the handling also. Uh, it's got the same brake on it. Uh, but because it's CBO, it's got the all LED light stock. Uh, the frame is actually painted to match the paint scheme. Custom color on the bars, heat shields, intake. That's nice, man. Super nice. What do these run? Uh, they're high 20s, somewhere around there. Looks good. And so, the chin spoiler on the front, or is it to protect the, uh, does it have like a cooler or something? Oil cooler or no? No, that's ju it's just a regulator down there. Okay. Good looking bike. Yeah, I definitely like the, uh, like the way they did like the metal, like the bars up here and how they match it with the exhaust and everything. And then dual disc on the front. No, nope. single? No, yeah, it's dual. That one has single. Yeah, single on the standard, dual on the CVO. Yeah, dual CVOs, okay. Cool, hell yeah. How you liking that trike, brother? Awesome. <laughs> How's the power on it? Trip the tires leaving the dealership. Damn, so. Pull it onto the main road. It's freaking like car tires on that thing, man. It's amazing. We'll do that one next. <laughs> All right, cool, man. Ooh, I want mine to chirp. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so test riding the 2017 CVO breakout. Kickstand up. Man, this one feels very similar. It's just more refined. <laughs> Dude, you can feel the difference in power right off the bat. So my overall thoughts on that one, awesome bike, love it, very smooth, comfortable as well, especially like ride height and all that. This one has all those same characteristics, but it has a little bit more in terms of engine power and uh, a couple more refinements. It needs gas too, but it not run out of gas. Yo, that empty light is flashing. Which sucks because I'm about to get on it. Hopefully I don't run out. <laughs> so let's check out the power on this thing. The uh, 103 versus the 110 here. What do we have, a 20 roll? Woo! <laughs> It's got some, it's got some get up, man. It's very nice, noticeable. Now, once again, in comparison, I'm comparing it to the Lowrider S. It uh, feels a little bit slower, but that's because the weight of the motorcycle is, uh, it's heavier than the Lowrider S. The Lowrider S is like 670 pounds, and this one's going to be like the higher, I wanna say probably 700s. Controls are pretty much the same, however, this one does come with cruise control, which is right here. You turn it on and off by pressing that in, and to set it, you press it downwards, and then boom, that's that's cruise control, you're on. To cancel it, you can pull the brake in, or you can press that inwards. Now the, uh, I know you can always adjust the clutch, but 
On this one, the clutch does engage a little further out. I really love the look of the lines right here. That's really super cool. I love the fact that the, uh, the tack is mounted right here. And this is one of Harley's upgraded tacks. Uh, basically, you've got the RPMs in there, you've got the speed, you've got your gear indicator, you've actually got a fuel indicator as well, and you've got your remaining mileage at the bottom, 17 miles. So, well, that's really cool. It is a like a key fob system, so all you basically need is that in your pocket, and you're good. And then built into that as well, you also have your key that I'm assuming pops out like a, like a Jetta key or something like that. You know how they do the Volkswagen keys where they pop out and you can lock your bars. Now in addition to needing or having that fob, you can also ride it without a fob. But what they basically make you do is you have a pin number that you can put into the bike. And so like if you don't have the fob but you still need to ride it, you can basically start it up, it'll ask you for your pin, and you use the controls somehow to put in your pin number, which is cool. This is a this is a badass bike. I love the look of it. The red and the black, it's just the red and black always go well together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like my logo. <laughs> Now this one does have like the uh, what Harley calls a speed screen in the front However on this one, it's not really keeping any of the wind off of your helmet or anything like that So I, I would say it's probably definitely more for aesthetics on this one. Uh, I'm sure it helps the you know Wind reduction of the bike. I love the fact that they topped off the uh, inverted forks with uh, These black caps instead of it just being like chromed out I gotta do that to mine, man. That's nice. I gotta get inverted forks on mine. So inverted forks basically gives it like a, a bit of a stiffer feeling in the front, like you're uh, a little bit more in control. Engine braking is nice and smooth with the blip on this one. There's a lot more weight on that thing. <laughs> that was fun. This is a super nice bike, man. I uh, if, if you guys are wanting a breakout and you're able to shell out the extra cash for the CVO, I would I would definitely recommend going for the CVO. I mean, it just looks great too, and I couldn't even imagine like it's it's got to sound amazing with the uh, aftermarket exhaust on it. It already has that growl to it with the stock exhaust. That right there. It's very aggressive. Yeah, this is a great bike, man. I like it a lot. Like I said, they just added like a few more refinements to it. You know, like with the flush mount and the grips and the color of the bars and all that stuff. Everything's just blacked out. Dude, that bike's a lot of fun, man. A lot of fun. It feels similar in terms of like ergonomics, you know, like how, like obviously the riding position, all that, the ride height. Right. But then, I mean, once you sit down, coming from that one, going to this one, just like everything feels a little more refined, you know, yeah. like, you know, all the, I mean, you've got the cruise control on it as well. You've got the upgraded tack, upgraded Harley tack. I mean, the fact that everything's blacked out, you've got the front little headlight fairing on there, inverted forks. It's just like, a little more attention to detail across all of it. That's true. I mean, that's how the CVOs go for Harley in general. Yeah. They they definitely put a lot more effort into all the the, the little things that add up to make a very big difference. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely, like you said, add up to make a very big difference in terms of like just the look as well as the uh, the feel of it. Yeah, it's a great looking bike, man. Love the red and the black, and then like the the faux wood grain trim in there. Hell yeah. Very cool. And then the the two lines going over the top of the tank. Uh, vent hoses. Vent hoses? Yeah. Okay. So you said the this one is like high 20s? Yeah. And then what is the, the normal breakout at? High teens, low 20s, depending on the color option. High teens, low 20s, depending on color? 
Okay. Steel flake stuff comes a little bit more. Okay. And is it like this is the way it comes from Harley? This one is completely stock. Completely stock from Harley. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like the wheels. Well, cool. If you guys are interested in that, I mean, I love both of them. I obviously, like this one a little more. <laughs> a little more refined. If you guys have questions on any of them, post up the questions in the comments below. Should get you in on the uh, registered on YouTube so you can answer some questions if people got them. Yeah. yeah. You on YouTube yet or no? Yeah. 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 All right. What's your uh, What's your username on there? That's a good question. AA Ron Harley. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, awesome. Very fun bikes. Both of them very smooth. This one, a little more pep to it. I like both of them. But yeah, in terms of, I'd say the only drawback really is uh, lean angle. But other than that, I mean, if you're buying this bike, you're definitely not buying it to like track it. <laughs> or most Harleys for that matter. But uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in either one of them, if you guys are in the Central Florida area, come see my man Aaron over here. He'll hook it up, come in, say uh, Blockhead sent me. Maybe he'll hook it up a little more. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, anything else to add to it, man? No, I mean, that, that covers both of those bikes. Now you get to ride this one. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. The trike. All right, well, we'll wrap that up as one episode. So hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. If you guys haven't subscribed already, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well. Like I said, go see my man Aaron over at Orlando Harley. Thanks again, man. Appreciate you uh, taking us out, doing some test rides with us. And uh, yeah, until next time, you guys ride safe out there. Stay vigilant. And. <laughs> All right, later, guys.